Okay, guys, now we're going to go over our passage and we're going to talk about it paragraph by paragraph because the first time you read it, you just need to read it through. But the second time you read it, you need to kind of stop and think about what each paragraph is talking about. And if you get to the end of this paragraph and you have no clue what you just read, then you're not comprehending what you're reading. You need to go back and read it again. And sometimes even as an adult, I have to go back and read something two or three times to make sure I really understand understand it because it's going to be hard for you to get questions correct if you don't know what you read. So the first paragraph said, Kevin loved watching TV more than anything else in life other than his parents and his little sister, of course. He loved cartoons, baseball games, and shows about fishing. Kevin's parents had tried many different things to cure him of his love of TV. So in this paragraph, I learned Kevin loves TV. He loves it almost as much as, as anything else in his life. Okay, so paragraph two. They had come up with a list of awful chores that had, Kevin had to do to keep for just one hour of TV time. Kevin did all of his chores right away and he didn't complain. Then he did the same chores again the next day, including mopping the kitchen floor. So we learned that Kevin is willing to work to watch TV. He loves TV enough that he goes ahead and does, it says awful chores. He goes ahead and does those and he even mops the floor because when he gets finished, he knows he's going to get to watch TV. So he is willing to work for it. That's how much he loves it. One week they banned him from watching TV. What does ban mean? They banned him. They told him to go and play football with his friends or paint a picture with his little sister or read a book. So if they banned him and instead they tell him to go watch, go play football or paint a picture or read a book, then I know that ban means that they stopped him from watching TV because they're giving him other things to do in the place of watching TV. Kevin did these things, but at the end of the day, he would come home and sit in front of the turned off TV looking sad. So I learned that while he did these things his parents told him, he missed TV terribly. These things that his parents hoped would take the place of TV, like reading or painting, they didn't work because he would still come home and sit in front of a TV that wasn't even on, a turned off TV, and look sad. So he really does love TV. You know, my friends watch TV all the time and nothing seems to be wrong with their brains, he said to his parents. Why are you so worried? In this paragraph, he's doing the same thing I'm sure you do to your parents. But my friend's parents let him do this or I can do the I can't do this, but my friend Sue can do this. So he's just trying to figure out why other people are allowed to watch TV and he's not. They sighed. When you sigh, it's because you're tired. <sighs> So they're just kind of tired. But the next day, they made a shocking announcement. So they're really tired of discussing this same issue of the TV. Kevin, his father said, we are tired of arguing about the TV. We think it's going to turn your brain to mush, but we'll give your way a try for two weeks. You get to watch TV whenever you like, and we mean whenever. So there are no limits. He can watch as much TV as he wants to as long as he does his regular chores and his homework and he can't watch anything that's inappropriate that he knows he's not supposed to watch. So they're giving in to him. They're going to let him watch TV. Now, as a parent, I know there's probably a, a ulterior motive to that, but they're going to just let him do it his way for a while. Kevin couldn't believe his ears. He couldn't believe what they were telling him, but he was afraid to ask any questions or seem suspicious. Suspicious. That's going to be an interesting word. If he can't, if he can't believe his ears and he's afraid to ask questions or seem suspicious, I know that the or right here tells me that these th two things kind of mean the same thing. He did. He was afraid. And if you're suspicious, it means you're not sure about something. You're unsure. You're afraid that maybe things aren't what they seem to be. So he asked himself, would he really be able to watch TV whenever he wanted to? Could he trust what his parents were saying to him? So he's very doubtful or suspicious. Those two words are synonyms that mean the same thing. 
he decided to stay quiet. Sometimes the less you say, the better off you are. They might change their minds. So the great TV watching party began. Kevin is excited. As much TV as he wants to watch, that is awesome, he thinks. That Friday, Kevin watched seven hours of TV. The next morning, he got up at 6 o'clock and he watched until noon. Then he started again after chores and lunch. So basically, we learn in this paragraph that he is so excited to get to watch TV, he's just going to go with it. He's not going to question his parents or wonder about it. He's just going to watch TV and he spends literally all day watching TV. This is great, he thought. This would show his parents that he could watch TV whenever he wanted and still be a normal, smart kid. So he thinks he's really showing his parents here, hey, I can do this. I get my chores done. I'm watching TV. My brain's not turned to mush yet. So he is very excited. See that exclamation point? That tells me that he's got a lot of feelings and he's passionate about what he's talking about. His baby sister was not too thrilled, however. She was happy to watch cartoons with him. But when he watched shows she was too young to understand, she yelled, You need to come play with me. So Kevin's happy, but the little sister, she's not, because she misses her brother, because she tells him she wants him to come play with her. Kevin's response was, Sorry. My show's about to start, so TV is still more important than anything else. On the following Friday, Kevin settled in for a TV night. His final choice was an old monster movie on the science fiction channel. So he's probably watched, that tells me he's probably watched all of the other shows um, during the week and things. He's, he's watched pretty much everything he had to watch, and he's resorted to old movies on a different channel. Everyone else was asleep by then, so it's got to be late at night, and Kevin was thinking about how lucky he was. But as he sprawled on the floor in front of the TV, something odd began to happen. So sprawled on the floor means he spread out on the floor, and something odd begins to happen. The monster in the movie reached through the TV and grabbed Kevin by the shoulders. The monster pulled Kevin straight into the TV and Kevin screamed. Now we know that a monster is not going to come out of a TV and grab someone. So we can pretty much assume that Kevin has fallen asleep. And he has watched so much TV that he is dreaming about being inside the TV. Kevin had just been thinking about how funny the movie was. The monsters were not very real or frightening looking. After all, this movie had been made a long, long time ago. So he wasn't scared with the movie because he says how funny it was. And it didn't. the monsters didn't even look real. So it wasn't a very scary movie like you may see now. The creature's movements were uneasy and slow because it was so old. But the clumsy monster was only funny if you were lying on the floor in front of the TV and not inside of it. So when he starts dreaming that he's actually in the show with the monster, suddenly it's not quite as funny anymore. As the now terrifying creature dragged Kevin along the fake looking scenery in the movie, he continued to scream, let me go, let me go. He was very afraid of this creature. So I know that now Kevin in his dream, he is actually really afraid. The monster doesn't look friendly anymore. It actually now he's actually dreaming and he's having a nightmare. Suddenly, Kevin felt if he was being shaken, not dragged. Kevin, wake up, wake up. You must be dreaming, his father said. Everything's okay. Let's get you in bed. So his father must hear him. He must be making noise when he's having his bad dream. The father comes in, sees that he's having a nightmare, wakes him up. As Kevin's father reached up to turn off the TV, Kevin saw the monster staring out at him from the screen. He didn't look so harmless anymore, Kevin thought. He realized that he was just as glad to see the screen go dark as he had been to see his father's kind face.
So in this paragraph, we learn that Ke that Kevin's glad to be awake. He is glad he's not watching TV anymore, and he is ready to go to bed. 